I think it's very cute right here. Notice how, notice how pal palpable, palatable. Notice how palatable he's packaged the idea of separate races here. Um, notice how the only traits that he lists are inarguable traits and traits that aren't controversial. Listen. Characteristics, including but not limited to skin color and facial features. Notice how those are the only two that he lists, right? Nothing controversial, but just, oh yeah, different people have different skin color and facial features. Therefore, yeah, that's funny. That's cute. I like that. Nice job. Be more or less frequent in some populations, depending on whether your ancestors came from one continent or another. In this case, various genetic characteristics will make it possible to trace someone's ancestry back to a continent or to a specific population of ancestors in the past. This is what we call a clustered genetic distribution, as opposed to a random one. Such clusters are present in human populations, which confirms the ex- Yeah, he said they're not limited to that, so he leaves it open-ended enough for racists to agree with, right? Oh, yeah, and other characteristics, such as IQ, cognitive ability. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, he doesn't actually, like, name enough for anybody to dis- for, um... He doesn't aim enough for it to be offensive, but he leaves it open-ended for, like, racist people to cling on to, right? It's good. ...existence of races. However, finding these clusters merely allowed scientists to reaffirm our conclusion that races are real in humans. Indeed, the obvious observation that the face... Right, that, oh. Wow, this is really interesting. He used a lot of the rhetoric against me. This video must have been recorded before last night, most of the dialogue, because this... Re um, a lot of these same talking points were used against me. Um, this is also not true. Hold on. Finding these clusters merely allowed scientists to reaffirm our conclusion that races are real in humans. He brought this up yesterday against me, or yesterday, two days ago, where he said that um, scientists have reaffirmed what we once thought to be true about race. That's absolutely not true. Um, phrenology, I'm sorry, phrenology as a science is completely, like, debunked. Um, this idea... Uh, 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 of the racial divisions that we once believed existed, um, that there are segments on the skull that are unique to the negroid brain or some shit, has absolutely not been verified. Um, and if anything, genetic sequencing has given us like a lot more insight into what we consider to be races or, or how geographic origin works than, than what was ever once thought. Um, that there are a, v a vast difference between types of black people, types of even African sub-Saharan versus um, Northern Africans, um, different groups of white people and whatnot um so no that statement is totally incorrect that we but the, but again this is another cute way of of hold on okay races however finding these clusters merely allowed scientists to reaffirm oh yeah so again this is something that is packaged very disingenuously um i love this i love how dishonest the statement is it's it's like this is like such a great lie okay so what we have is, hold on, like, I think you could do so much. I wish I had better tools to do this with. Um, so what we have is, we, we have a word, okay? Um, hold on, I'm eating all these, I'm sorry. We have a word, okay, that, that, that means something, okay? Um, Tara McCarthy does this as well with the word right, white, right? So we have this word that means race, okay? So we had all of these ideas about um, what what, did, what were different races of people, you know? Like black people were subservient. They had the negroid brain, the negroid skull. You know, we had all of these traits about black people. And now coming into the future, now that we can sequence genes and whatnot, um, now that we have debunked things like phrenology, um, we actually don't have this understanding at all you know we, we, th this idea that black people's skulls were shaped differently or all of this like this isn't true at all right so but but we've held on to this one word we've held on to the word race here so as we've moved into the fo into the future um using our, our our better understanding of human biology and human behavior and all this right we have confirm that there are genetic clusters that, that, that um, can, can be traced back to geographic origin. So, you know, these are definitely a thing that exists. JF pins this word race and says that um, because we believe in races now to some extent, or at least we can verify genetic clusters biologically, that means that we used to believe that race was a real thing. Well, all of this is true. So he does two things here is one, okay, he makes the message um, digestible for a new audience, somebody that's not racist, because, okay, well, he said that people used to believe in a separation of the races, and we do now, so yeah, that must be true. But he also makes the message simultaneously um, digestible to an audience that is racist. Like, oh, in the past, we knew black people were less than white people. We knew that Asians weren't creative. We knew that Jews were very smart. And JF is affirming that we have affirmed our previous, super, uh, or our previous beliefs with our current research. 
right? That this kind of like intellectual dishonesty is so dangerous because it's so effective. The, the way that this is packaged is really well done um, in terms of selling you like a propagandized message that's total fucking bullshit, right? It's just, this is a total fucking lie. The idea that modern day, uh, modern day gene sequencing has reaffirmed like phrenology or racist thoughts from a hundred years ago is absolutely ridiculous. But because he's packaged it in this way, it sounds sellable because of that word race, right? Um, yeah, that's really interesting that he does that. Confirms the existence of races. However, finding these clusters merely allowed scientists to reaffirm our conclusion that races are real in humans. Indeed, the obvious observation that the facial features of Asians, whites, and black people can be easily identified and that these features are irritable is sufficient to conclude that race realism is true. So, again, um, <clears throat> this is it, it's such a complicated topic, but he's so good at like selling it in one word phrases. So, we can see that there are differences. Um, we can see, so if I make an analogy, then this seems absurd, right? But so we see that there are differences in people's faces and skin, right? Um, Therefore, races must be true. But the thing is that he's making an argument for something different, and then, and then because he's made an argument for that difference, he instantly applies it to something else. So what JF is arguing for is that there are observable differences in people. That's true. Of course there are observable differences in people. But then he takes that argument and he somehow applies it as though it's a justification for the separation of people into races, um, which is, depending on how you want to approach that argument, isn't necessarily true. So here's an example of this. Let's say that I have... Um, Let's say that I have 10 different pencils, okay? Um, let's say that I've got a red pencil, a blue pencil, a, a green pencil, all, you know, different types of colored pencils. Um, what I can do is I can say, here I have, you know, I've got, um, I, I've got, I want to subdivide these into different things that, that are more specific than pencil rather than just color, right? So what a person would go, they would say, well, look, look, you can observe, you know, this is very different than this. You know, the green pencil and the red pencil are very different. And you go like, well, how? They're, they're all pencils, aren't they? You go, no, 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 no. Look at all the observable differences between these pencils. You know, these are totally different things. It's like, well, hold on, that's not necessarily true, right? Just because a pencil is a different color doesn't make it not a pencil or a different subdivision of pencil. It's just a pencil with a different color. Um, the argument that there is something intrinsically different about these things, like what race realists say insofar as cognitive function and IQ, has to run a lot deeper than observable differences. Um, for another really great example of this, um, so, so this is one way to debunk the argument in that he's not actually making the argument for the separation of races. There's a second way that we can debunk this argument, though, is that we can take the syllogism that he's created and we we can plug different things into the premises and we can actually generate conclusions that we don't agree with. So let's listen to the syllogism one more time. The syllogism is essentially um, observable differences means that um, race is real. Humans have observable differences. Therefore, race is real, right? Um, hold on. So it's black people can be easily identified and that these features are irritable is sufficient to conclude that race realism. Let me let me we'll listen to it at a slower speed here so that we can really think about it. Okay. Indeed, the obvious observation that the facial features of Asians, whites, and black people can be easily identified and that these features are irritable is sufficient to conclude that race realism is true. So, just because people have different identifiable features, that in and of, it, in and of itself, according to JF, is sufficient to claim that race realism is real. But race realism doesn't just mean people look different. It implies a whole lower set of cognitive functions. Now, let me instead... Um, let me instead take, um, I wish I could use my own family. I don't have pictures of my family, but I could instead take, uh, uh pictures of a, a group of people who are all related to one another. Okay. Now of these people that are related to one another, I could find a lot of shared features, but I could find very different features as well. If we have a great grandma and a great grandpa, you might see something like a different nose, um, show up in different family members or a different pattern of male pattern baldness or a, a, a different height, right? Um, the, the, how tall people are, um, the, uh, color blindness from, from a grandfather could be passed down to some children. I could take a family of people who are all of the same race, but I could show you different observable and irritable characteristics, and then I could plug that into the same syllogism and go, well, look at this group of white people, this white family, who all came from the same grand great grandmother and grandfather, and, and then all other white people uh, breeding with them, right? Well, look, there's observable differences in characteristics. Some of them are colorblind, some have different patterns of baldness, some of them have different heights, some of them have different colors of eyes. Therefore, race is real right but when i plug in but when i plug in family members there well now all of a sudden that argument sounds ridiculous well hold on that's actually not true observable differences in characteristics isn't and the fact that those observable differences are heritable isn't really sufficient evidence that race is real in the way that we mean race when we say race realism does that make sense um so this argument is actually um 
not only is it not sound, um, because he's talking about racial characteristics that run much deeper than observable differences, it's also internally inconsistent as well. It's not a valid argument. Um, it's very sad that somebody would construct an argument that is simultaneously unsound and invalid and then prides himself on their philosophy. Um, you lost me? Wait, what did I just say that didn't make sense? I'm sorry. Wait, somebody tell me what I just said that didn't make sense. You lost me at black people are people. Okay, I'm going to assume that most people followed along. You're using words, but not providing any real point. My point is that this argument here... ...of Asian allowed scientists to reaffirm in you this observation that the facial features of Asians, whites, and black people can be easily identified, and that these features are irritable, is sufficient to... The fact that you can identify features that are er heritable that are different between two people doesn't necessarily prove race realism because you can take everybody in the same race and you can identify features that are heritable, but you wouldn't use that to justify different races. So for instance, if I take a collection of white people and I show that they have different colors of eyes or different hair colors, you wouldn't argue, oh, well, these people are different races, even though you've observed features that are both heritable, like hair color and eye color and height, um, and you've observed features that are observable, um, like their hair color, their eye color, their height, you wouldn't therefore say, well, we should separate these people into races, right? That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that this own argument is internally inconsistent, that it's not valid. The syllogism falls apart when you plug other things into the premise. The conclusion doesn't logically follow. Is that? Okay, sorry. Include that race realism is true. Race realism is the statement that races exist, and it should not be confounded with racism, the belief in the superiority of one race over others. Because I love this too, that their go-to example of racism is black people hitting, beating up a white person. I love that example. What, a, what an amazing way to sell this video. Um, fuck black people, am I right or am I right? Great example that in the in the history of the United States, the video that we go to is black people beating up a white person. This is a what a what a well put together video. I'm sorry. All right, we'll continue on. Others, because two things can be said to be different from one another, does not mean that one must be superior to the other. The same goes for human races. Race realists do not claim that individuals within a race are all perfect copies of each other. Indeed, race realism recognizes that there are genetic and behavioral variations within races, such that two people. So when we talk about these variations, right, this is where we pretend that race realists just acknowledge that everybody is different. But that's not really the claim, is it? When we see race realists talking about the support of an ethno state, usually they're talking. What are what are the things that we're talking about? We're talking about the warrior gene from black people. We're talking about the intrinsic stupidity, the low IQ. IQ that is heritable amongst all brown people, um, African American, Hispanic, whatever, people that aren't white of, of European origin, right? This is what people like Tara McCarthy, um, you know, explicitly say. This is what people like Lauren Whistle, Dog Whistle, uh, Lauren Whistle. Um, this is what people like Lauren Southern, Dog Whistle. Um, when people say civic nationalism fails and they talk about needing to create a peer society of intelligent, high IQ people, they're not usually saying, because if the claim was true that people were just varied, Right? Well, then why would we have an ethno state? We would want different types of people in a society because we can all complement one another's weaknesses, right? Maybe some people excel at other things, some people excel at other things, right? Well, we have these people in society to complement one another's differences. Race realists and people that use race realism, the descriptive race realism, to build the normative claims that society should be locked off, that races should have their own place to, to, to stay, aren't doing this on the assumption that everybody is different. They're doing it under the assumption that they want to look out for their own group because they believe that their own group is intrinsically superior to another in some way. Usually IQ is what people will talk about here of a given race can be quite different on a number of physical and psychological measures. Race realism does not specify the number of races that exist. While it is recognized that categories such as black, Asian, or white can be useful proxies for broadly pointing to groups of humans with certain genetic characteristics, race realism also recognizes that, in principle, the human species could be divided in many more races, up to arbitrarily high numbers such as 50 or even 600, depending on the level of precision that one is interested in, in terms of tracing back specific ancestry to specific geographical locations. Race realism does not claim that individuals of two races cannot reproduce together. The fact that mixed race couples exist and can produce fertile offspring does not mean that races do not exist. Contrary to popular belief, race realism does not require all features of a race to be inherited through DNA transmission between parents and offspring. While it is believed that most characteristics of an individual, including skin color, hair color, and IQ, are heavily influenced by DNA, it is possible that other features that distinguish races may be passed down through generations via other mechanisms, such as epigenetics and differences in the way parents educate their children. While it is possible that many complex social behaviors, such as parenting abilities, are controlled by DNA genes, it should be noted that the race realist position is agnostic concerning the molecular underpinnings of heritability, and affirming race realism does not require finding the molecular origins of the differences between races. In summary, race realism is a statement about how genetic variants are spread through a population. It is not a moral position, but a factual one. It merely states that the genetic Ah, uh, nice. And another another nice thing that JF does here. Um, this has always been my primary, cons uh, my primary um, 
condemnation of the way JF conducts himself, where he says that race realism is not a moral position, but a factual one, right, is firstly, we, we already presuppose that we've factually proven race realism, which we obviously haven't in a fucking four minute, five minute video. Um, but it's the idea that I'm just here telling you just objective facts, you know? Black people are just kind of dumb compared to white people. It's just a genetic fact. Now, I'm not going to build any normative claims off of that. I'm not going to tell you what we should, how we should treat black people in society. I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to back up these claims that are built on shaky grounds, and then I'm going to let the actual ethnostate people all go ahead and talk about these things. Ironically enough, while JF himself has come out in favor of, like, a Quebecois ethnostate, um, which I believe there are videos of him talking about how he wishes there was one, um, you know, we'll ignore the fact that those videos even exist. It's just that he jumps out, and he will comment on this descriptive... No Knowing that people always build these philosophical odds off of this position, this foundation, that we should have ethnostates, he'll just ignore all of that and pretend it doesn't exist. What's wrong with what he's saying if he's not making any claims about what to do? If you want to silence him because his message can be misunderstood, that's like saying stop researching infectious diseases because it can cause a massive plague. So, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure most of the scientific world disagrees with you, that most scientists agree that there is some level of moral responsibility insofar as what you research. Hold on one second. So, for instance, like, if you were, um, if, if you were a researcher and you're working with, like, some type of, like, um, antibiotic or some type of infectious disease or whatever, you would have some moral responsibility to make sure that it's not, like, leaked out of the lab or that you don't infect a ton of people or that you don't do, like, crazy dumb shit with it, right? That, that science believes to some extent that you do have some sort of moral responsibility. Um, you know, people working in the Manhattan Project had a lot of those uh, qualms as well. Like, is the research that we're doing, you know, knowing that this is going to be applied to nuclear weapons? Is this ethical research? Should we be working on stuff like this? Um, you know, this, these are questions that scientists do grapple with. I know that we like to pretend sometimes that, oh, science people are these nihilistic, you know, they all only seeking truth and don't care about the implications. They just want the answers. Like, well, no, science is filled with ethics. You know, people question all the time on... Um, whether or not we should even utilize research obtained through unethical means, right? Some people will argue that you shouldn't even cite research used um, from the Nazi camps, not because of some of the problems with their record keeping went up, but just because it would be unethical to, to, to source that research, you know? Um, what's the point of taking part of the video if his definition of race field is just biological differences? I think most people could just look at two different people and say they are different even within the same race. So let me see if I can construct an analogy. This is so complicated. This is correct. In most infectious disease research, we have to attach a bioethics text to the protocol we are submitting. Most, if not all, engineering professions have requirements about ethics courses in university. Destiny, I would probably disagree with you. How you conduct your science needs to be ethical. But as far as the quasi-philosophical position that certain truths should be off-limits, you're going to lose a large number of scientists if you go there. No, I don't... Not, not for medical research coagulation. There's no way that, like, um, there's, like, a group of scientists that are just like, well, we want to know how to create the best, most killer virus on the planet that will just go and do that research without, like... Without thinking of the ethicalness of, of said research, no? All genetics researchers have required ethics courses. Medical ethics is an entire field. In all my studies so far, everything has definitely had ethics as an important undertone and discussed all the time. Is it racist to divide people with the same traits into groups? Asking for your opinion. So, um, you'd be surprised. I will grant you people aren't const constantly looking for super pandemic virus number 754, but you better believe that it is being researched, albeit done in a very constrained and regular way. Well, the constrained and regulated part is what I'm talking about. That's the ethics part, right? Doesn't that hurt science ultimately if we let moral slash political biases get in the way of truth? No, well, because ultimately science is to serve mankind, right? Um, or technology, I guess, the application of scientific knowledge. Um, are you saying that research into race and IQ shouldn't be looked into? No, it absolutely should be. Um, okay, so like here's an example that I would think of. Um, I'm uncomfortable using this as an example because I don't know how many people can follow along, but I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll try this for a while until I feel like it's fallen apart, okay? Let's say that somebody comes up to me and they're asking, um, let's say that they want to stream. They want to be a, a video game streamer, okay? And they come up and they're debating between... Um, they're debating between an 8800K. This is a real processor, right? I don't even know what the new fucking Intel shits are called. No, it's not. I'm trying to think if I can do like normative and descriptive claims off of what I'm about to do. This is really shitty. Okay, let me try to find the equivalence here, okay? This we might totally throw away this analogy by the end. Let's just let's just hop on and let's see where it goes, okay? Let's just hop on and see where it goes. Um let's say that we, <laughs> let's say that we have an 8700K and an 8700, okay? 
We're trying to find out which processor do we want to use to run our new human brains, okay? So let's say that this is a heated, a heated debate, okay? This is a heated debate, okay? One side claims, um, let's say that, and let's say that money is important. So we want everybody to be able to afford chips to run their brains, okay? We're all Android 2Bs, okay? Now, some people are saying that you know, the 8700K, this can run all of our brain functions, okay? This can run all of our brain functions just fine. Everybody can afford it. We save money. This is just a positive. This is a thumbs up. I don't know how to draw a thumbs up. Um, we'll give it a plus plus. <laughs> I can't draw anything, okay? The 8700 is fine. Now, the 8700Kers come in, and they're like, yo, this is an unlocked chip. This shit is fucking awesome, you know? Fuck the 8700 shit. That shit is fucking garbage, Fuck that cuck-ass bullshit. You can't overclock that shit. Don't talk to me about base clock. You don't want your system crashing every two seconds. You don't want to change your fucking RAM timings. All right? Just get the K chip. Fuck with the multiplier. Get that shit boosted. Hell yeah. That's some dank-ass fucking shit, okay? Now, you're having this big thing where you, you, you have these, like, fundamental assumptions of what is true about the chips, and then you're building arguments off of, like, what should we use, okay? Now, let's say that ultimately at the end of the day... Um, Let's presuppose that this might be the correct answer, that this is like the one that like if we take the average of all the people's moralities or something, that this is the answer that we would kind of agree with, which is generally true in Western society. We generally want to treat all people kindly. We don't want to discriminate against groups of people. Generally, this is true. Okay, so let's say that this is where somebody like JF would come in. Okay. And JF would stand here and he would go, well, actually, uh, the, the 8700K is technically a little bit better than the 8700. And that's the only contribution that they would make to the argument, right? So then all of these people are like looking at this guy who comes in, claiming to be an academic, who's making an argument, who's really ignoring, you know, like, is this actually the best chip for the job? Is this actually like the way to go? Like, he's not really speaking to all of that. He just comes in and says like, well, technically the 8700K is slightly faster than the 8700, technically, because it's an unlocked chip or whatever, even though it's not relevant maybe to any of this. Um, did we, did this, did this analogy work? I don't like this analogy because it's all it's all descriptive claims here. I don't think it works. Listen, we got it. Everybody everybody follow that shit, right? What the fuck, dude? All right, I'm cutting the stream. We destroyed them in that break in that uh, in that debate. Did you just confirm that black people run faster than white people? Yeah. White people's brains is like the K series chip. Okay, we're unlocked. We have unlimited potential. Black people have the non-K series brain, unfortunately. That's that's pretty much what the analogy just said, right? That's probably not... That's probably, like, the worst analogy I could have used. <laughs> oh, shit. Never mind. Yeah, fuck that. I would have to think a lot harder to, um... I would have to think a lot harder to, uh... To construct a, a good analogy. It's just such a complicated issue, I guess.